yeah good morning uh, in this class we will be discussing about the most important order hemiptera taking into consideration some of the important commonly seen insects as uh, many people refer all the insects as bugs but as a matter of fact the true bugs belongs to order hemiptera the true bugs why we call them as true bugs because they have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and they are economically very very important and especially for the agriculture and as i told you that these insects have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts they will be sucking the they will be sucking the plant sap with their stylets and it's not simply the sucking the plants up but as they suck the plants up they also transmit some of the diseases that's how they are very very important of course few insects coming under the order hemiptera are also having some kind of predatory nature but in general in general this is one of the largest order and you will find these insects uh, very normally and most importantly on the underside of the leaf because they are small and then uh, they keep on sucking the plants up just they go around near the weeds and uh, some of bugs of course they are uh, little bigger as well you can as well see them so especially during the night time and you will be finding these uh, uh, hemipterans uh, near uh, your the light and some hemipterans they are the bugs uh, heteropterans and these bugs you will be seeing if you touch them probably they will try to release some kind of uh, odor a bad odor so that you don't touch them that's how these kind of important characters are present in the insects uh, coming under the order hemiptera and uh, with this uh, brief background you will try to understand the importance of the order hemiptera and also the important families uh, super families and also families uh, what the uh, uh, insects belongs to order uh, hemiptera yeah so as we call them as hemipterans hemi means half actually if you take the uh, clear meaning of hemiptera means half wings no it's not like that they have a full wings but especially the four wing of some of these insects it is half thickened it looks like a elytra but and half of the portion three fourth of the portion looks like elytra very tough and very 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 black in color dark in color and thick very very thick and the remaining one third are one fourth of the portion is actually membranous it means the four wings the four wings are half thickened so that is the reason all these insects coming under uh, half thickened not necessarily all the insects coming under hemiptera will have a half thickened wings because as we go ahead there are many number of insects they don't have a half thickened they are simply plain membranous and plain four wings but however in generally hemiptera means it's half thickened or basally thickened wings and these we call them as a true bugs these we call them as a true bugs or plant bugs or bugs a uh, true bugs because they have all these insects all the insects coming under uh, order hemiptera are having a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and they suck the sap from the plant tissues and then that's how they do a very very serious damage to the crops not only sucking the sap but also they transmit some of the diseases and these are the uh, clear examples probably you'll be seeing this red cotton bug very commonly and pentstomid bug and some of these hoppers aphids and mealy bugs so these are very commonly seen insects and at your uh, garden or at your uh, a uh, farm on the trees everywhere you will be seeing these kind of insects and all these insects coming under uh, order hemiptera so they are the most successful because uh, the reason they are very small they are very small they have a piercing and sucking kind of uh, mouth parts 
they are mostly polyphagous they can survive in uh, any kind of plant they're mostly in polyphagous some are of course monophagous and we call them as a true bugs because uh, they have a very very well developed piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and they feed on the plant juices and also they transmit the diseases that's so that's very very economically important because even a one insect though it sucks the sap very very little quantity from the plant surfaces plant tissues but that insect is enough to kill one plant by transmitting the disease and so that's how it's very economically important and uh, the other hemiptera is uh, again classified into two groups and that two groups are based on the wing modifications as well wing structure as well like heteroptera and homoptera and the size uh, usually they are very very small but there are some bugs they are very very big as well so they are the most successful they are the most successful uh, uh, hemimetabolic insects and uh, they are called as a true bugs that's what i showed in the beginning usually in many people they call any insect as a bug no so actually the true bugs are the insects which are coming under uh, order uh, hemiptera and uh, they are economically important because they do a lot of uh, serious damage to the crops and plants by sucking the sap from the uh, plant tissues and also they are economically important because they not only suck the sap from the plants but also transmit the diseases and they have a very very well developed piercing and sucking type of mouth parts and we will just go into the details about the most important characters as well the suborders and the other families so these are the generic characters like uh, uh, the habitat is terrestrial and they are highly polyphagous and sap sucking the habitat is they are highly polyphagous and sap sucking except few they are monophagous but generally they are all polyphagous and sap sucking they suck the juices from the plant tissues because they have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts the size is very small to medium and the color they have beautiful colors varying colors from uh, it is uh, it's actually varies from the species to uh, species and then uh, the head as far as the head is concerned yeah correct in case of heteroptera prognathus straight actually the head the orientation is straight and uh, hypognathus or opisthognathus in case of homoptera as i told you that uh, the order uh, hemiptera is again divided into two suborders one is heteroptera and homoptera so heteroptera they have a correct uh, or uh, prognathus uh, kind of arrangements of uh, head then uh, homoptera as far as homoptera is concerned they have a hypognathus actually head is looking down then the antenna is very really long in most of the insects and especially it's very very long in uh, heteroptera compared to the homoptera and usually it is four to five segments and compound eyes are very well developed and uh, they have two ocelli and the mouth parts is extremely important to understand so this is the one order in which all the insects in which all the insects they have piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and we have discussed enough when we are discussing about the mouth parts and the mandibles and maxillae and uh, they convert into the stylets and these stylets mandibular stylets are useful for piercing and uh, and as far as the maxillary stylets are useful for sucking the sap so that kind of arrangement mouth parts are uh, present exclusively in case of uh, the insects coming under uh, uh, hemiptera and you can see on the left side there are many number of bugs so these bugs are very commonly seen and these probably you will be seeing this kind of plant hopper on some of the trees and this green color one is very very popular and you will find everywhere if you try to touch them so they will emit some kind of uh, a stink uh, stinking smell and uh, this one is a red cotton bug and very very common you will be seeing this bug not only on the cotton but on other insects as well and this is actually aphid so these aphids are very common in everywhere suppose you have a any kind of uh, your garden trees and uh, especially uh, the pulses uh, any kind of plant you have at your backyard and you will be seeing this kind of aphids we call them as a 
uh, aphids are um, very small insects, sucking insects, and these insects are very very common. So whenever you see a uh, ants roaming on the plant surfaces, definitely you will see these kinds of aphids because we call them as a penu banka in Telugu. So this is a, a huge number, many number of insects, uh, almost more than five thousand species are there in this uh, order, and. Uh, with these uh, mouth parts, they are very, very popular because uh, they suck the sap from uh, the plant surfaces and tissues and cells and they survive and they also not only suck the sap from the plant tissues but also they transmit the diseases. So wings as far as the wings are concerned and as we classify uh, the insects belong to the order Hemiptera into two suborders, one is Heteroptera and Homoptera. In Heteroptera, uh, the four wings uh, have hemi electra kind of wings. It means half of the wing, almost like three, four sometimes. So half of the wings, the basal portion is very, very thick and tough. It looks like an elytra. The remaining two th one third or one fourth uh, is some kind of membrane structure. You can see here. So the, the yellow color structure is actually uh, elytra kind and the, uh, the red colored one is actually membranous. So this kind of hemi elytra is found, especially in the four wings of hemi elytra, heteroptera. And uh, as far as the homoptera is concerned, the four wings are uniform. It's, uh, they don't have any kind of hemi elytra uh, kind of uh, wings. And uh, it's very simple, like most importantly, if you see the orientation of the wings during the rest, so you can see very clearly here, the, uh, actually the wings are uh, just uh, lying flat over the body during the rest. Whereas as far as home appearance, you can see the wings are uh, held over like a tent kind of structure. So they, they, they held over like a tent kind of structure over the body. So these are the two important difference between heteroptera and homoptera. So one is uh, the four wings are always a hemi elytra in case of heteroptera and also the wings are uh, held over the body just flat uh, as far as the heteroptera. In case of hemiptera, uh, homoptera, in case of homoptera, the four wings are uniform and these wings are held like a tent during a resting state. And legs are very normal legs, there is nothing special and no special modifications, but they have some kind of supporting structure called empodium uh, and so that they can actually, uh, they have a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, catching mechanism over the plant surface so that they will not fall down very easily. So that's how they have a empodium and that's the only otherwise there's nothing special as far as the legs but most importantly you should remember two important characters one is about piercing and second kind of mouth parts and the second one is wings again within heteroptera and homoptera there are two big differences one is the four wings the four wings of the heteroptera are less hemi elytra kind of things and during the rest the wings are held over the body just flat flat over the body and as far as the homoptera is concerned, the four wings are uniform. The four wings are uniform here, you can see. So these are all the homoptera the four wings are uniform and there's no special modifications. And similarly, the wings are held like a tent during the rest. And the legs, they have some kind of empodium structure so that so they can catch the surfaces very easily so that they will not fall down and they will not slip down from the surfaces. And uh, as I told you that the green one here, for example, these green ones you'll be seeing very commonly. And they have a scent glands, a odoriferous glands. And these scent glands are present only in the heteroptera. And these scent glands opens near the hind coxa. So uh, in the hind legs coxa, so these odoriferous glands openings are there. Glands can be present inside body anywhere. But the opening is always at the hind coxa, and these uh, odoriferous and scent glands are bad smell. Actually, it's not a scent; it's a bad smell. It gives some kind of bad smell, and that bad smell glands are always present in uh, all the insects coming under uh, the suborder uh, Heteroptera. And these scent glands are open near the hind coxa. So, as far as the homoptera is concerned, they have a wax glands. So, they have a wax glands. And uh, another important thing is, you must be knowing the cicadas. Cicadas, cicadas in uh, Telugu, we call them as, uh, uh, because uh, when you visit the forest, you'll be uh, listening some kind of chirping sounds. 
so these chirping sounds are coming from cicada, uh, cicadas and the all these cicadas uh, coming under this uh, heteroptera and uh, the, you can see here so the cicadas they have a some kind of sound production and that sound production is coming from the first two abdominal segments in fact in the first two abdominal segments they have a very very thin cuticle structure and that cuticle uh, thin cuticle structure works like a drum works like a drum, 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 drum. So works like a drum. So because of that movement of the cuticular structure, that chirping sound uh, will come, and that's what you see uh, in the night time. And also you will see these cicadas, the home terrains. So many places. So you can see these uh, cicadas. Mostly you will be seeing this kind of uh, insects on the trees, and especially in the near the parks. And the night time when you visit the forest, when you visit the very silent places, you will be say, listening some kind of sounds. So that sound. Uh, is uh, from the cicadas and so they they are actually generated we have very huge sounds actually and then anas so that kind of sound production is always there in the uh, home of terrans and especially the most importantly cicadas so the cicadas uh, uh, will produce a very big sound drum kind of sounds actually and that drum kind of sounds because they have a very thin cuticular layer in the first two abdominal segments that box like a drum that box like a drum and because of that that sound will come it means so when you remember the insects uh, coming under uh, hemiptera so four important things one is they have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts extremely important all the insects coming under hemiptera they have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts that's the reason they suck the sap from the plant surfaces plant tissues plant and plant cells and also they not only suck the sap but also they can transmit the disease because through reverse process and they can send the viruses inside the plants at places so that so the viruses will infect the entire plant so economically very important because they have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and the second important character is so it can be classified into two suborders one is heteroptera and homoptera and in the heteroptera you can see the four wings are always hemiptera kind of thing the hind wings are always membranous the four wings have a hemiptera kind of four wings the half of the four wings at the basal portion is thick and tough and looks like elytra and actually it's some in some of the insects it's very very tough the remaining half or two third or one third and one fourth is always some kind of membranous in the four wings of heteroptera and similarly uh, the wings during the rest they held flat over the body in the heteroptera and as far as the hemiptera is homoptera is concerned so homoptera the four wings are uniform you can see here the four wings are uniform there are no modifications but during the rest these wings are held over the body just like a tent so that these are the two important one is about the piercing and sucking and again within the wings there are two important points and the third one is glands third one is glands so the heteropterans will have a scent glands or odoriferous glands or bad smell glands or stink glands and uh, these glands can be any number but they open always in the hind coxa and these stink glands or bad glands are present only in heteroptera so as far as the homoptera is concerned they have a wax glands they have a wax glands and the fourth important character is sound production that sound production is happens only in the insects coming under homoptera and most importantly the cicadas so cicadas uh, they with the produce a huge smell that is the reason we popularly uh, call cicadas as a sound producing insects and whereas other uh, homopterans also do produce sound but it's not audible actually it's very very less frequency sound but as far as the cicadas they have a, a very important why i am telling you uh, uh, ah yes i could remember now the telugu word kichuraldu we call them as a kichuraldu so in, during the night time when you visit any um, forest places and that you will be uh, listening all these kinds of sound all these kinds of sounds are coming from cicadas and uh, with this then we will try to un make, understand the most important difference between the insects coming under uh, uh, heteroptera and homoptera you can see the clear uh, uh, two important uh, pictures i have given so you can see this is a red cotton bug very common is this you remember as a classical uh, insect coming under the heteroptera and as far as the home of them they are very small insects they are very small insects and you can see very clearly the four wing the four wing half of the four wing so half of the four wing is very very is you can see here the orange color or red color with black spot 
so highly thickened and whereas the remaining half is membranous kind of thing so the four wings the four wings and then the uh, another important difference is the head is actually you can see the head head is always always correct or prognathous and whereas in this case the head is actually hypognathous that's one and here the antenna is bigger in size the antenna is bigger in size whereas in uh, homopteran the antenna is very very small compared to the heteropterans and another thing is the wings the four wings are always uh, hemilitra kind of things the hind wings are membranous and here the four wings are uniform and hind wings are also membranous kind of thing and another thing is the wings are held flat over the body during the nest whereas in this case the wings are held like a tent during the nest and here all these insects will have a scent glands and bad scent or odoriferous glands whereas these insects they have a wax glands and these insects the insects coming under heteroptera they don't produce the sound whereas the insects coming under homoptera they produce the sound so these are the basic classical uh, differences but however we will go into the details so here so most importantly you can see the differences uh, as far as the heteroptera homoptera are concerned the egg uh, the uh, head is prognathous and uh, homoptera the head is uh, hypognathous and uh, here the antenna is usually 4 to 5 segmented from the bigger antenna and here the antenna is 3 to 10 segment segments and another thing is pronotum is very large in heteroptera whereas the pronotum is very very small in homoptera and the wings is hemi elytra and the, here it is uniform and the wings are held flat over the body in the heteroptera during the rest and wings are held like a tent during the rest in case of homopterans and the uh, odoriferous glands are bad scent glands are bad smell glands are stink glands are always present in the insects coming under heteroptera and whereas in case of homoptera they have a wax glands they have a wax glands and the sound production the tympanal organs are uh, uh, pre present in uh, homopterans and tympanal organs are present absent in the heteropterans and here so we will try to understand uh, uh, the ca important taxonomic characters of few families under uh, heteroptera first and then followed by the homoptera so the first one is simicidae the uh, first one is simicidae so simicidae all the bed bugs coming under uh, this family simicidae you can see the bed bugs now of course you don't see previously we used to have a bigger problem of bed bugs of course in the hotels so this is a very big problem and you can see the structure here they are dorso ventrally flattened they are dorso ventrally flattened and they have a bulging eyes here so they have a bulging eyes and usually they have a very very reduced four wings the four wings like a scale uh, like a small patch and they have the wings are always reduced and uh, the another important character is they have a wonderful piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and they suck the blood from the humans and other animals as well and another most important character is they have a hemocelic and uh, insemination it means so the male bed bugs actually pierce the integument of the female and inject the sperm into the hemocel so these are the important characters of uh, the bed bugs uh, which are coming under the family simicidae so the body is dorso ventrally flattened probably bed bugs means nallulu mana telugu lo nallulu antamu so these uh, they are, they are, the body is dorso ventrally flattened and they have a bulging eyes and the wings are actually reduced and the four wings then look like a pack and uh, they have a, a, a wonderful piercing and second kind of mouth parts and they have a habit of hemocelic and traumatic insemination means the male actually the pierce open uh, the abdomen and then uh, they lay the eggs inside the female they lay the sperm inside the female so that's how the insemination is done as far as the bed bugs are concerned and the second one second family is pentatomidae second family is pentatomidae and pentatomidae is very commonly seen these green color bugs you'll be seeing very commonly and these we call them as if you touch them actually if you touch these green color bugs and definitely you'll have a bad smell you'll have a bad smell you have to wash the hands so they it means they have a odoriferous or stink glands why we call them as a pentatomidae because the pronotum here you can see the pronotum here is uh, very very broad 
the pronotum here is very very broad and shield shaped and antenna is always five segmented okay, so antenna is always five segmented antenna is always five segment the pronotum you can see in both the, these bugs the pronotum is very very big and shield shaped and uh, and the four wings are hemielytra and the hind wings are membranous and this three important characters you should remember one is about the uh, uh, shield like uh, pronotum broadened very big shield like pronotum and the second one is about uh, they have a stinking glands or odoriferous or bad glands and these glands are open always in the hind coxa and uh, another thing is about the uh, antenna they have a five segmented antenna they have a five segment this is very common the green color one is actually we call them as a green stink bug nazara viridula nazara viridula is very important to remember so nazara viridula is a green stink bug which is very very commonly seen in most of the places most of the plants so that's very common even you find they must be crawling into the house so sometimes so pentatomidae the insects coming under the family pentatomidae we call them as stink bugs stink bugs because they produce some kind of stinky material very bad smelling material they have odoriferous the glands are uh, stink glands are bad smell glands and these glands are open hind coxae and the pronotum is a shield kind of structure very broad so pronotum is very broad and uh, it's a shield kind of uh, structure and with this uh, these are the important characters and most commonly seen insect of the pentatomidae is uh, green stink worm which is nazara viridula and the another one is ligaidae so here you can see here and this is a very very small uh, bugs seed bugs a uh, very small bug seed bugs and uh, the most commonly seen is in the cotton so if you can pick up the old cotton uh, poles and old cotton then you will find these bugs and here the biggest difference between pentatomidae and this family is in the pentatomidae is antenna is five segmented and here the antenna is four segmented this important difference and the four wings are hemielytra and the hind wings are membranous and the most important taxonomic character is the front leg femora is moderately swollen here you can see here the front leg femora here you can see the front leg femora is moderately swollen Uh, with they have a uh, teeth kind of structures. This is the one important uh, taxonomic characters. So that is the biggest difference between pentatomidae and this family. In the pentatomidae, the antenna is five segmented. For example, we have an insect. Then you, you know that that coming under heteroptera, then immediately see the number of segments on the antenna. If the number of segments of the antenna are five, then it belongs to pentatomidae. And if the number of segments are four, it comes to like a day. Then uh, similarly, uh, and you will also try to look into the leg modification. The four legs, the front legs of the pentatomidae have no modifications, but as far as the front legs, uh, front legs here uh, in the seed bugs is actually femora is very very swollen and it has got some kind of spiny kind of structure. The most commonly seen insect of this family is dusky cotton bug. You can see here. So this is the dusky cotton bug. And uh, this is the adult, and these are all the names. So, dusky cotton bugs is Oxycarpus latus, very very commonly seen, and most destructing and destroying pest as far as the cotton is concerned. And uh, another uh, family is Myridae. Uh, we call them as Myrid bugs. And uh, Myrid bugs are both destructive and helpful. And uh, you can see here, this Myrid bug is very very commonly seen in the paddy crop. And these myriad bugs is very very dangerous myriad bug and it destroys everything. We call them as a tea mosquito bug, and which not only happens in the tea but also happens on every cashew nut, what not, and most of the even uh, jamun and uh, guava and uh, many majority of the crops. So this is a very very destructive pest and which actually sucks the sucks the sap from not only the leaves and flowers and fruits as well. That is the reason the food quality goes down. So. Myridae, we call them as myrid bugs. Uh, everything is normal. Everything is the most important taxonomic character is the cuneus. The cuneus is present actually. So the uh, this is the kind uh, structure the hemielytra. So hemielytra is actually you know, taxonomically if you divide the hemielytra as clavus, corium, and cuneus, and uh, the cuneus is present in case of myrids and tarsi is uh, three segmented. 
and the most important is paridin my paridin mirid bug citorenes levid penis actually this paridin paridin mirid bug is very common as in most of the farmers they think that this mirid bug is a destructive or dangerous but actually not and this is a very friendly insect and very useful insect which works as a predator eating the small insects in the paddy and the second another important is the mosquito bug head yellow pelters antony it is very very destructive pest very very destructive pest and very damaging dangerous pest and uh, because of the uh, happening on uh, infestation of the with the the mosquito bug and most of the times the orchard farmers they are losing heavy uh, money Uh, because the quality of the fruit is coming down very seriously so not very big important as far as the taxonomic is concerned the only thing point you remember is curious is present in case of um, uh, mirid bugs uh, four wings that's nothing but hemi elytra and another one is phyrocorida is very commonly seen phyrocorids uh, we call them as a uh, red cotton bug and cotton stainers we call them as cotton stainer because it stains the cotton so this is very very common not only happening in the cotton but also in other crops as well so here so most important taxonomic character is more branched beans in the hemielytra so you look into the hemielytra it itself you can identify in the hemielytra itself you will see the more lot of number of wheels and they are highly branched that is the one and second important taxonomic character is the coxa is rotated the rotating coxa that's a coxa trochanter femur tibia tarsi remember the coxa is the first segmented and the coxa is rotated it means legs can be rotated all the legs. so that's the important taxonomic and the coxa is a rotating coxa in case of phyrocorix and phyrocorix are uh, we call them as uh, red red cotton bug the cotton stainers it is very popularly seen so here you can see the coxa is uh, rotatable coxa it means the legs can be rotated in all the directions and uh, the another and the last one is coridae another and last one is coridae so coridae we call them as a leaf footed bugs these are also commonly seen you you'll be finding these leaf footed bugs and uh, the most important taxonomic character is antennae is four segmented but however so antennae is four segmented in ligand also but here so along with the four segmented antenna they have a hind femur here you can see so the femur is uh, the hind femur is highly enlarged hind femur highly enlarged and leaf like dilations so that is the reason we call them as a leaf footed bugs it looks like a leaf actually so in some in the insects the, uh, the actually hind femur is very very enlarged looks like a very thin leaf like structure and they have a spines as well they have a spines uh, all over the legs so the uh, most important taxonomic character is the first one is antenna is four segmented uh, and the second one is the hind femur is extremely important remember if you find any bugs where the hind legs hind legs especially the femur has got a dilations leaf footed like layer leaf like structure so all these insects coming under coridae remember and the commonly seen uh, corids are uh, rice gandhi bug so leptocora is aware because as we are in the rice zone uh, area so definitely you will see these many students they will be catching uh, catching hold of this uh, leaf footed bug and you will be seeing that these bugs are actually visiting your rooms as well in the house so with this we will uh, finish uh, the important families under the suborder heteroptera and tomorrow we will be discussing about the uh, other uh, families under uh, uh, the suborder homoptera so as we understand the insects are extremely important and they are uh, highly polyphagous and they are uh, they are actually sucking the sap from on the plant juices they not only suck the sap from the plant juices but also they transmit the diseases they are economically very very important as far as the farmers are concerned and they do a very very serious damage so so the insects coming because they do a serious damage because they have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and that's the reason they can as well transmit the diseases and another thing is uh, the uh, insects coming under uh, order uh, hemiptera can be classified into two sub orders one is heteroptera and homoptera the heteropterans they are bigger in size the head is actually prognathus and the four wings are hemielytra kind of things 
the hind wings are membranous the wings are held flat over the body and they also do produce because they are bigger and said they also do produce odor of various or bad smelling or scent glands or bad smelling glands and also the most importantly they are bigger in size and as far as the homoptera is concerned the homoptera insects are really small compared to the heteroptera they are very small the head is hypognathous the antenna is smaller and then uh, they have a very very uniform four wings there is no modification at all and uh, during the rest the wings are held uh, like a tent over the body and they actually produce some kind of wax uh, uh, glands they have a wax glands and another interesting thing is they also have a sound producing mechanism the, all the homopterans they have a sound producing mechanism especially that is very very prevalent in case of cicadas and they are extremely important as far as the agriculture is concerned and we try to understand some of the character important characters of the few families which are coming under heteroptera and with this class we will end it and tomorrow uh, tomorrow we will be discussing about uh, some of the important taxonomic characters of the families coming under suborder homoptera under the order hemiptera so thank you very much and bye bye see you again